Hi, this is Kara Tierney from Monroe Community College, and in this video we're going to build on our knowledge of Lewis structures by adding the concept of formal charges. So what a formal charge does is it helps us sort through possible Lewis structures. In a previous video, we looked at the polyatomic ion SCN-, and we came up with three valid structures for it. In order to determine which structure is preferred, or which structure will contribute the most to our overall resonance structure, we're going to use formal charges to decide. So a formal charge, what is it? It's a fictitious charge that's assigned to each atom in a Lewis structure to help us distinguish among competing Lewis structures. So we're going to be calculating a formal charge for each individual atom in each structure that's possible. And how we calculate formal charge is we take the number of valence electrons that the atom starts with and we subtract from it the number of lone electrons and the number of bonds that it's involved with. Now the number of elect lone electrons in a structure is easy to remember because we just look at the number of dots that are around that atom. For the number of bonds, we just look at the number of dashes that are around that atom. So we can simplify this to thinking about, we just take the number of valence electrons it starts from, with, and we subtract from it the dots and the dashes that are around it in that structure. And in this way, we look at each structure, and the Lewis structure that minimizes the formal charge will be expected to make the biggest contribution to the resonance form of that molecule. So let's look at CO3, 2 minus, or carbonate. We have three different structures that could contribute to its resonance form, and to decide if one is going to be more prominent than the others, we're going to calculate the formal charge on each atom in each structure. So let's look at the first structure, and let's look at carbon. So below it, I'm just going to note that I'm calculating for carbon, and we know that carbon starts off with four valence electrons because it's in group four, and if we look at it, are there any dots around carbon? No, there are no dots. It has no lone electrons. So we subtract zero for those uh, lone electrons. Now we subtract for the number of bonds it's involved with. I just think of this as counting up the dashes. So it has one, two, three, four dashes. Carbon has an, a formal charge of zero. Formal charges of zero, I just leave alone, and when we calculate a formal charge that is not zero, I'll denote it on the actual structure. So let's look at oxygen. There are two types of oxygen in this structure. There are two oxygens with a single bond and one oxygen with a double bond. Let's denote the oxygen with a single bond as O1, and I'll just put a little arrow here so we know what we're talking about. And we know that oxygen starts off with six valence electrons. Each of these has six dots around it. Those are lone electrons. And each is involved in one single bond, so it has one dash. This gives it a formal charge of negative one, which I will write nearby that O in the structure. Let's look at the other O, which has a double bond. It starts off with six elect valence electrons, and it has four dots around it, one, two, three, four, and it is involved in two bonds because it has two dashes. This gives it a formal charge of zero, so we're not going to mark it in our structure. When we go to the next structure, we see that carbon is bonded in the same exact way that it was in the first structure, and so we know that it has a formal charge of zero. The double bonded O is exactly like the other double bonded O. It has four dots and two dashes, so we know that also has a formal charge of zero. And our oxygens with the single bond are bonded exactly like the oxygens with the single bond in the first structure, so we know that these are each going to have a negative one charge. You can recalculate them just to make sure if you want to convince yourself, but these each have six dots and one dash, so they're going to come out to negative one. And same with the last structure, we can see that the carbon and the double bonded O are going to have formal charges of zero, and the single bonded O's are going to have formal charges of negative one. So now when we look at these three structures, 
if one is going to contribute more than the others to the overall structure, the overall resonance hybrid, then that one would have a minimized amount of formal charges. But we see here that all three of these just have two formal charges of negative one. So we can say that all three of these structures are going to contribute equally to our resonance hybrid. The next thing I want to mention before we move on is that when you're calculating these formal charges, a good way to check and see that you've done these correctly is that all the formal charges within the structure should add up to the structure's overall charge. So we see that the two negative one formal charges add up to negative two, which is our overall charge. And so that makes sense. In a neutral compound, they would all add up to zero. Let's look at another example. Let's look at BRF3. So Br is our central atom. This has an expanded octet, but that's okay. We're still going to check its formal charge. So it starts off with seven valence electrons. It has four dots around it, so we subtract four, and has three dashes. So this has an overall formal charge of zero. Fluorine also starts off with seven valence electrons. It has six dots and one dash. So it too has a formal charge of zero. So when we come up with all formal charges of zero, that means this is a very stable form of this compound, and so it's probably not going to form any other structures, which is why I said that when you have a central atom, that needs to have an expanded octet, just add those extra lone pairs onto the central atom, and oftentimes this will give us formal charges that are more balanced, rather than adding it as double bonds. So now I'd like you to try these two examples. I've given you the structures for SO2 and SCN-, and I'd like you to calculate the formal charges on each of the atoms in each of these structures and decide if one structure is going to contribute more than the others. So please pause the video now and calculate these formal charges. So let's look at SO2 first. In SO2, we have three types of atoms. We have S and then we have our two O's. So let's just look at our S first. S starts off with six valence electrons. It has two dots and three dashes. So our central atom is going to have a formal charge of plus one. So I'm just going to put that right there. I'm going to do O1 as this guy right here and that guy right there. O's with a single bond. The O starts off with six valence electrons. It has six dots and one dash, so it is going to have a formal charge of negative one. So I'm just going to denote that right here. And our second type of O is going to be the double bonded O. It also starts off with six valence electrons. It only has four dots, but it has two dashes, giving it a formal charge of zero. So we see that, oops, I forgot to mark this right here. So we see that these two structures have equivalent amounts of formal charges so they will contribute equally to the resonance hybrid. We also see that when we add up the formal charges within the structure, they both they add up to zero. Plus one, negative one adds up to zero. The overall charge of this is neutral, so that's good, that's a good check. Now let's look at SCN minus. This one has a lot of work for us. So our S in this first structure, and it looks like each structure is unique from the others, so we have to calculate all of the formal charges. Yay! So S starts off with uh, six valence electrons. In this structure right here, I'm looking at this guy, it has six dots and one dash, which means that it has a formal charge of negative one, which I will mark there. Our C starts off with four valence electrons. It has zero dots and four dashes, giving it a formal charge of zero. Now, if you look at the other two structures, you will also notice, even though the dashes are arranged differently, all of these carbons have zero dots and four dashes. So we know that carbon in all of these structures is going to have a formal charge of zero. Let's look at N in this first structure. 
N starts off with five valence electrons. It has two dots and three dashes, giving it a formal charge of zero. So this first one has, um, if we add these up, there's only one formal charge and it's of negative one. So that means we did them correct. Let's do the second structure. S starts off with six valence electrons. It has four dots and two dashes, giving it a formal charge of zero. N starts off, remember we said that C was, was zero, so we can skip that. N starts off with five valence electrons. It has four dots and two dashes, meaning it has a formal charge of negative one, which I will mark right there. Let's look at our last structure. S starts off with six valence electrons. It has two dots and three dashes, giving it a formal charge of plus one. And N starts off with five valence electrons. It has six dots and one dash, giving it a formal charge of negative two. And those add up to negative one, so that's all right. Now let's compare the three structures. These are not equivalent. There is one that is most obviously not as prevalent as the others. That is the third structure. This third structure will not contribute as much to the overall resonance hybrid as the other two because it's got more formal charges going on. So we know that it's going to be one of these two that's contributing the most to our resonance structure. And we can't tell which one because they both have a negative one. And we're actually going to, to learn about how to differentiate between those two in class later. So we'll get to that. So for now, those two are the best two. So now that you know how to differentiate between structures of resonance, you are ready for our big practice session that we're going to have in lab this week. So come ready with your questions and ready to practice this stuff a lot in lab class this week. I'll see you then.